all my crafty people out there. Um, I have a new project. I have recently been thrifting. Ooh, surprise, surprise. And I found some sheets. I, it, I think it's just a flat sheet and the pillowcase. And I think it's a standard pillowcase. It doesn't look terribly large. Um, but it's this beautiful kind of yellow and limey green. Honestly, it reminds me of some sheets that maybe my parents had when we were kids. It, it looks very vintage to me. I, I, I don't know for sure if it is. There's, you know, there's a little staining over here on this side, but it, they're in great shape. I've washed them already. And like I said, it's a pretty pattern to me. It looks old, um, especially this, this coloring, the yellows and the greens. Point is... I really loved it and I got the flat sheet and the pillowcase. Now the flat sheet, I think I'm going to do some of those one size fits all wrap around pants. And I'm, I've got a pattern here and I've also got one on the way that I'm going to compare and see which one I like the best. So those, these are going to become, or this color pattern is going to become a pair of pants as well. But for the pillowcase, I thought, well, I could just make a traditional pillowcase dress for one of the girls, but I I think I want to cut it up and just use the fabric for a pattern I like. Now, I have this little pattern. I purchased this, um, I think I did this year. Or, no, last year. I purchased this last year. And it is uh, Simplicity 8347. It is super cute. It has... Um, it has the romper over here and the dress, a, kind of a, a long dress. Of course, you could vary the, the size of that. And then it has this cute little blouse or shirt, which is just a shorter version of the dress. In fact, this is only two pieces. And I would imagine this is only two pieces as well. Um, they kept the front and the back exactly the same because this is a little elastic um, neckline. and. So, tempted to make the stuffed animal too, but don't get me going there. So, I think today, I want to maximize the use of this pillowcase. And I believe that the romper will maximize the use. In other words, use the most of the fabric. Um, and it just is super cute. It's not hard at all. So, I think we're just going to jump into it. And I'm going to show you, I've already got the pattern pieces traced again. I trace my pattern pieces because I hope to use these patterns for years to come and once you cut the size out, a size out, you don't get the rest of the sizes. So I have traced a size one, it's going to be hard for you to see that, but uh, the size one, she's actually going, uh, turning two in August, but she's tiny. So uh, one should be just perfect. I think I've already made her romper in that size. And she just needs to get this one. This this will probably get her through maybe to October down here. We don't, we don't get cold for a while. So I've got the pieces and I'm going to show you how I laid them out. I'm actually gonna pin them down and then bring you back so, cause I don't want that boring part and then we'll see what we're going to do to cut it up and get sewing. All right, I'll be right back. I just wanted to show you all this real quick. I need a little more fabric out of this pillowcase than just what's here. I can lay the pattern on top of it right now and cut it, but I need a little more for the collar. So what I'm doing is I'm opening up this hem, this big hem at the bottom, and that'll give me enough fabric to uh, to use for the, the little collar. And it won't come up on this crease, so the crease won't be a problem. But I wanted to show y'all um, something I like to do. I don't get to do it very often because the stitches aren't usually this, this good for it, but that little pointy part on your seam ripper, obviously, it, it, it's useful for digging under your stitches. But this, this little red part is to keep it from poking into your fabric if you want to utilize it in this way. 
Now again, I don't always get an opportunity to use it in this way. Usually I'm plucking and picking all the way through. But this particular one, it's got nice even, I think older stitches. Uh, I did a little research, it looks like these are vintage. So I'm gonna put the red dot part in underneath my seam and I'm just gonna push. And it, <laughs> maybe it's just for someone who sews, but that's very satisfying to hear that just rip and not rip your fabric, just ripping the stitches. I know, I know. it's, like I said, it's an acquired taste or something you're just interested in. But then I had already seen ripped most of it. So now, now I have opened it up and see I've got a little bit more, I'd say a good, hmm almost three and a half inches more uh, fabric just on the front and then there's obviously some on the this but I don't I don't want to include that crease because that crease is old faded and pretty darn permanent I, I could press it out but I, I'm not sure I, I wouldn't get the fading part out but this will still give me a little bit more room to use for my pattern so I just wanted to show you that and that's I just factory seam ripping <laughs> and I'm going to pin this on and I'll come back when I'm through pinning this top. Alright now it's a little hard to see because my tracing paper is white but I have a pattern piece here this is the back of the romper and a pattern piece here this is the front of the romper and generally what I would do is I would flip these where they kind of interlocked better like puzzle pieces so I would I would salvage as much of the fabric as possible. The problem with that is this fabric is a little bit directional. It's not extremely directional but you can tell that this plant goes up and these tend to have and the, and the flowers are facing up so I think I wanted to keep with the direction that the fabric was going in. That's why I pinned it this way. You always have to make sure that when you're pinning down that your fabric, if it is directional, you're going in the right direction. So like this is the bottom of the pants and my flower is going up. So this is the up direction. So I, I, will, I will have it facing up. In other words, she wouldn't have an upside down flower. And then all I've got left at this point, and this is where taking this hem out is gonna help me out. This gave me that extra three and a half inches. All I have left is this little piece right here. And again, I have to have cut of I cut two of all of these pieces. These aren't on the fold. These are seamed down the center. Um, and, I, and that's because you're making pants. So you need that, that center seam. And I'm, I'm assuming. And so this is my little collar piece that will go across the top and hold my elastic banding. So I'm going to get it as close as I possibly can to the edge and to this piece that's highest up on the fabric. So I make sure I make the best use and the most use of my fabric. Any fabric you have left over is just an opportunity to use in other projects, whether that be another outfit, um, Again, I could use this for sleeves, or what I like to do is save it and uh, usually cut it up for quilting. I do like to quilt, and that is another use uh, for sheets. If you're at estate sales, thrifting, Goodwill, what, wherever you're getting large amounts of fabric through thrifting, sheets are great for quilters because if you ever have to back a quilt you know it takes yards and yards so utilizing a sheet which I've done for most of my quilts just saves on purchasing yardage now I have purchased yardage and, I, and generally I bolt at a time in order to cover a quilt depending on its size but like I said a sheet Actually, excellent. Just and it doesn't have to necessarily be a flat sheet. If it if you can cut out the elastic of a, a fitted sheet, you can still use it for the same process. So now we have all three of our pieces pinned on, front, back, and little collar. 
and I'm going to cut these out and we're going to get to sewing so um, I'm not going to show you the boring part you know the the deal though anywhere where we have notches we cut out not into the pattern we don't we want to cut out not into the pattern because I don't want to mess up my seam allowances and have any kind of holes so I will start cutting and I will get back with you when we're ready to sew okay we're going to start sewing this little puppy together and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find where we start in the instructions and this is dress A, top B, and romper C. So it's kind of an all-in-one little pattern process and you can see up top this is the dress and they're putting the little rickrack or the decorative uh, stuff on the front first, front and back first, and then they're sewing it together. Well, we're down here actually. We're working on the romper. Now it does recommend to put the little rickrack on first. I don't care to do that and the reason I don't is because I like for it to, I don't like to trace this line and make it match up perfectly. I mean I, I may think about it, I, I, I don't know if I'm going to put rickrack on it anyway. But you can always put a decorative thing on it afterwards, whether it be a stitch or rickrack, you know, that that's possible to do afterwards. It doesn't have to be tucked into those seams if you don't want it to be. Um, what we're going to do though is we're going to sew the front and the back together. Two, two fronts, two backs together, right sides together, and that's going to form our little side seam. And then once we do that, then we're going to sew our little crotch line. And after we sew our little crotch line, we're actually going to put them inside of each other to sew the entire inseam. So it's um, it's a different way of doing it. Well, not necessarily different, just another way of doing it. But I'm going to go through the steps. And first, again, we're going to sew these seams, which is the front and the back together. All right, let me get started. Now what I like to do is I like to take my pieces and have them laid out together beside each other with the seam spacing that I'm going to be sewing together. So I can just pick them up, a front and a back, and they are right sides together. That's the right side of the fabric. It's kind of hard to see because it's kind of a light pattern, but that's definitely the wrong side. So I'm putting a, a back and a front together, and I know they're the back and the front because one's got two notches and one's got three notches, or a, a triple notch, whatever you want to call it. And again, we're just sewing down this side seam to put our little front and back together. I am using my presser foot as my gauge. It doesn't come out to quite a 5 8 inch, but I'm not cutting anything off really. I mean a little teeny tiny bit of a trim maybe while it's going through the machine, but I'm not, um, I'm not changing that. As long as you're consistent, it's, that's the trick. You don't, you don't want to do, you know, a half inch there, a five eighths inch there, then your pattern just will never come out right. And of course, when you're working with adult clothes, sizing, it can be within a quarter of an inch, you know, so, but children's clothes are a little more forgiving, uh, thank goodness, and again, I'm just going to run this down, I'm not even going to take anything off the side here, I'm just kind of catching the little fuzzies where the fabric has inevitably started to fray a little bit with handling. checking my seams I'm going to get to the end here I'm going to put my next two together again right sides to right sides this this pattern is tricky you have to look really close because the um, it's such a muted pattern that um, the yellows still look like yellows on the back just a little less vibrant. Keep your seams put together. And just make sure your edges are meeting properly. Now 
we've got our front and backs together. So we have them like this. That's our little armhole. And now we're going to, we're going to sew those little inseams. And I want to make sure, I always want to make sure. So what we've done is sewn the outside. And now we want to stitch the front to back inner leg seam. So we're going to stitch these little ends, the little seams, these right here, the little crotch seams, together. Actually, I guess this is more the inseam, and this part will be. Well, it's the full length of the little outfit, so I don't know. We're going to go ahead and stitch these real quick. You don't have to do anything too quick. Make sure you've got right sides to right sides. Again, being consistent with how much fabric you're taking off and also using your, your presser foot in the same manner that you did for your last seam. So we're going to put that little inseam together. Bloomers always and pants always confused me when I was younger. I went to my grandmother one time and I said, just looking at the pattern, it just doesn't make sense. She told me, just put it together like it says and it'll make all the sense in the world at the end. It'll work. And of course it did, because the pattern was right, and so was my grandmother, of course. So we just cut off all our little ends. So now what we've got is we've got the little side. So this is the back of the romper. This is the front of the romper. And now we're going to put them inside of each other which sounds kind of funny, but so we're going to turn one of them right side out, okay, because we want right sides to right sides, okay, so we're going to put it inside of the other leg, oops, yes, okay, so now we have the leg put inside the other leg and we're having right sides to right sides so these you don't the seam is on the on this side on both of these and you're going to line this up and you know you've got the front sides together because there's your double notch and over here on this side is your Notch. So I'm going to run a stitch all the way down, all the way back up, and that's going to be the center seam of our two sides together. Okay? So let's run that seam. And then we'll start working on the collar. Again, I'm checking. I'm always checking to make sure I got right sides to right sides. I'm going to put this under the machine using my presser foot in the same way, trimming the same amount as I did last time, which is barely anything, usually just the fuzzies off the side. Keep your fabric lined up. thing about this particular fabric in this pillowcase, I don't know if it's because it's older, worn, it's super soft, but not thin. It's not like, like worn out thin, it's just soft. Keep checking, make sure you don't catch extra, in other words, pieces that shouldn't be going under the serger. And I like to make sure that my seams 
down here, the, the serge seams in the seam in the inseam of the pant are alternating of each other. So you don't get a, a big bulky piece in the in that area. Just kind of making sure and pull those those serger threads out. You want to just catch those while you can. That's just a secure way of making sure they don't go anywhere. going around that curve. So take your time going around the curve if you need to. Some people are real zippy fast on the serger. I'm cautious because once it's cut, it ain't going to back. Alright, and here's where the magic is. We take it inside out. Let's just take a look at what we got so far. The next time I'm going to do something with brighter fabric because this is hard to see. And voila! We have the beginnings of our jumper. So here's the side seam. There's the middle seam. There's our little legs. So we're going to start on the collar and um, let's see how it goes. I'll come back. Okay, one thing that I probably should have done before I put the legs together was to serge the bottom of the little pants. That way it would have had to open it, but I had to do it, I had to serge in the round, which is not a big deal. It makes a little mess down here at the end, but this just keeps me from having to do that little quarter inch roll hem. When I go to hem it, I'm just going to turn it under, press it, and sew it. So anyway, I, I added the serge to the leg so I can cheat and not put a quarter inch roll in it. The other thing I'm going to cheat on, sort of, I don't guess it's really cheating, but I'm, it calls for a narrow hem on the, um, the collar, the little collar pieces. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to serge those as well so they're easy to turn under. Let's see, it says narrow hem, long edge of the sleeves, or sleeve two, the pattern number, uh, the piece is two, um, with small dots with right sides together stitch the sleeve to the front of the armhole. Okay, so what I'm going to have to do is, I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm just going to run the serger over the little edge here and that will give me that hem, that narrow hem they're talking about and that will keep me from having to do a rolled hem. And once I do that, then I'll come back and we'll probably have to do the next part of the construction on the sewing machine because we're going to be putting in our little um, bias tape to make our arm nice and clean and also to finish our casing on the, uh, the little collar. All right, we'll be back. Okay, what I went ahead and did was these are the little collar pieces and they're also kind of go over the shoulder. And remember we put a, or I put a, a serge down the edge of the outer piece that's going to face out on the little outfit. And I did that just so I don't have to do a quarter inch roll hem, that kind of thing. And I just turned that serge over, wrong side, and ran a stitch down it. So now I've got my hem without all that extra effort. So I, I do that anytime I can. If I can put a serge line down and then just roll that hem up, uh, and stitch over it, I do. Saves time. There's no reason to get the iron out for that kind of thing. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to sew the little collar to the front of the, uh, the outfit. Now, the tricky part about that is that since we surged it, we got rid of our notches. So there's not 100% sure, for me at least, which one's front and back because the top and the um, 
the bottom, I mean the top, match. They're the same length. So that doesn't tell me if, you know, if one's shorter than the other, that that's the front or the back. So what I usually do is I use the little crotch line. And if I roll, if I fold it, like I would be folding it to put it in the drawer, you'll see that this one, there's less fabric on this side than on this side because this little seam, you can see it when you fold. And to me, what that means is this has got to be the back because there's always more fabric on the back because as humans, we're not little boards. Well, most of us aren't. We have back ends and they need more fabric than the front end. So by doing that, I can gauge that this is the front, which actually works out great because then I get this really pretty yellow flower pattern on the front. But in all honesty, if you were to get that wrong on this particular romper, especially for a child, it's not a huge deal. And, and if I'm being honest, they may even be put on backwards because there's really not any front or back differentiation unless you put like an applique or something that says, hey, this is the front. Or put the old tag back in and say, yeah, that's the back. So anyway, just want to let you know, this is what we're using as the front. So what we're going to do is we're going to take one of our little collar pieces and we're going to put them right sides to right sides here. We're using our notches and we're going to sew that right down the side and that's going to attach that little collar. Well actually what it ends up being is this piece that connects the back and the front and that's kind of like a, almost like the sleeve. But we're going to gather the entire neckline including this part to, to make it all nice and easy to put on, take off, all that wonderful stuff. So I'm going to sew these to the fronts and to the backs and then um, I'm going to come in and put our bias tape around the armholes but I'll, I'll come back for that because I want I want you to see what that looks like but for right now just know I'm fixing to sew the little shoulder piece collar whatever to the front and the back to connect the two. I wanted to show y'all how this, um, oh sorry, keep hitting the camera, sorry about that, how this uh, bias tape goes on. Now I'm using what they call single fold bias tape and the package looks like, th th this particular brand, looks like this, it's called single fold, I don't want to get a reflection, bias tape. This is five, oh, 0.5 or a half inch wide, and it's four yards in a package like this. This is um, right. But anyway, what it is, is it has this fold in the middle. So it's, it's folded one side here and one side there. Let me put my finger through it. So you've got a fold on each side. And what we're going to do is we're going to use that fold and put it right up against the top of our fabric. Uh, right up against the, the top of the, not the seam, but where the fabrics meet. And we're going to stitch in that fold line. And what that will do is that will create a little casing so what we did when, when we we're doing this right sides to right sides and so when we fold it over it encases that seam keeps it clean keeps it from fraying now technically what we could do if we didn't want to take this step is we could serge the entire armhole all the way inside the armhole and then turn it just like we did our hem and sew a little stitch on it that would work perfectly fine as well I kind of like this look a little better. It's a little cleaner from the inside. It just gives it a, a nice finish. So um, the instructions were to pin it to the armhole, right sides to right sides, which this is this is easy to tell this is the right side because of the seam here, but when you put the little arm on, the little sleeve on, you um, it looks like a wrong side because it's 
up against that little wrong side of the sleeve. But anyway, I've pinned it and I pinned it, like I said, the raw edges together, the raw edge of the bias tape as well as the raw edge of the fabric. And I've pinned it all the way through the armhole. I'm gonna sew inside this fold line. That creates an easy way to, to sew it. it. It just gives you a guide. And then we're going, when we're finished, we'll be able to flip that over and that will cover our seam and we'll be able to tack this down covers our seam, makes it more secure, makes it more finished looking. Um, but that's what we're going to do with both armholes and then we'll work on the top and the elastic and we'll eventually get down here and hem our little legs. So let me get going on this and I'll come back when I'm through with the armholes and then we'll start in on the neck. All right. Okay. I have sewn on my bias tape on both sleeves and well they're the little armholes. So you see these were sewn right sides to right sides and I stitched in that fold line and this is the entire armhole from the top of the neck in the back to the top of the neck in the front. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to fold it over and we're going to stitch right on the top here and this is going to make a nice little crease well a nice little cover for those seams keep it from fraying uh, gives it a nice finished look and we'll be able to top stitch right there over the tape and make a nice um, seam line almost like a double seam line so I'm going to stitch over this one and then I'll stitch over the second one. Again, same thing. We have sewn it right sides together. We're gonna turn it. And that just gives us a nice little casing for those seams and a finished look on that edge underneath the armhole. So let me get that done. And then the next thing we'll do is work on the, what looks like an expansive neck. I think it looks like it would fit me. But when we put the elastic in, it's gonna ribble up and scrunch up to a little girl size. Okay, armholes are stitched down. I did two stitches just to make sure I caught both sides of that folded um, bias tape. It looks nice too, you know, little double stitches. It is really hard to see because this fabric is so light. I'm doing a dark one next time. Anyway, uh, that's the top of the little sleeve. Now, it asks for a small rolled hem around the neckline. Well, you know, I don't like to do that. So I went back and I surged in the round and surged the entire neckline all the way around the whole thing. And now I'm just gonna have to turn it under, do a top stitch. And the next thing we'll do after I do the little hem is we're gonna add our casing to this whole neckline so we can put our elastic in. Now, I'm not sure if I have any bias tape in um, a color that'll go along with this. I might have to use the ivory, which honestly, it doesn't make a huge difference because this is so gathered with the elastic that the casing isn't a big deal. But I will go and look and see if I have anything in a, co a coordinating color that will go with that so I can put that. And I'm gonna use bias tape because it's a half inch and the elastic I'm gonna be using is a quarter inch, so this is more than enough to contain it. And we'll put that on as soon as I finish doing the little rolled, <laughs> rolled hem, um, my cheap serge hem. And that shouldn't take too long. And I'll look and see if I have some coordinating uh, bias tape. Okay, I went ahead and pinned my bias tape, which I'm using for casing. Now, this pattern, of course, has a pattern piece for you to create your own casing. And of course, you can create your casing out of anything you wanted to coordinate fabric or to out of the same fabric. I like pre-made stuff if I can do it. And, a, and this bias tape, like I said, is a half inch long, or half inch wide, excuse me. So my quarter inch elastic will fit right through there, nice and easy, it's already made. I did have to use the, the ivory color, but it works really well with this particular uh, fabric. 
So I don't think it's going to be an issue. I left this big opening. This is the back of the romper. And so I started the uh, bias tape right here and I've pinned it a inch and a half. So the top of that bias tape is an inch and a half from the edge of the garment where I've, I've done that little hem on the collar, on the neckline. So I, what I went back and did, and again, this is something that people will trace onto their pattern, obviously before they cut it. I went back to the pattern and I measured how much room there was between the raw edge and the line that they used for placing the casing. And it was a little over two and a quarter inches. Well, you figure you've got at least, you know, a quarter or better for a, a hem there. And so I, I eyeballed it and I placed it an inch and a half down from the top of this hemline, which is the neckline. And I think it works fine. I could move it up a little or down a little. It's really kind of whatever you prefer. And it also is a matter of if you wanted it to be fuller, a lot, you know, gather wise on the outside or inside. I kind of wanted to split the middle, so I'm down the middle there pretty much. I probably could move it over a little towards the neckline a little more, but I'm, I'm happy with it. I went with the hemming ruler and just took my inch and a half mark and made sure that the um, hem over here to the top of the bias tape is about an inch and a half. And I just did that all the way around and pinned it. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run a stitch very close to the edge of each side of this bias tape because I want to make sure I have plenty of room to push my quarter inch elastic through. I don't like it tight or, or you know, where it, it, you have to really give it a lot of effort. I want it to be plenty wide enough for my quarter inch elastic and of course my safety pin, which I'm gonna run it through with. So now I'm going to sew this down. I'm gonna start here at the seam where the arm and the little sleeve meet. I'm gonna start here, I'm gonna sew it down and I'm gonna leave this open and I'm gonna leave this open for right now, the other end until I get the elastic run. And then I will fold over the edge and meet it over the top of this to make it a little clean seam line. And I'll also catch the elastic at the same time so I can close it all up. So now I'm going to, like I said, I'm gonna seam that down. We'll come back, run our elastic, close it out. And the only thing we have left is to hem our pants. Okay, I'm just finishing up the casing and I wanted to just let you see me sew a little. I'm, I'm not sure who likes to see people sew or not. Um, sometimes it's the crazy thought that somebody's gonna put a finger under the pedal, I mean foot, I'm not going to. Anyway, I'm almost to the end here and when I'm through with this, then we'll cut our elastic Actually, I might just run it off the spool and not cut it. The trick to this, taking your time, and I'm getting as close to that edge of that bias tape as I possibly can to catch it, but not, um, not put a really big seam in it because I want to um, I want to be able to run that elastic through nice and comfortably little back stitch and we cut it I pick my foot up and so as you can see what I've done is I've put the bias tape on top one and a half inches down from the neckline I've left it open on both ends this I gave myself some an extra couple inches I'm going to send my quarter inch elastic through this casing, go all the way around, cinch it up to the point that I think will be comfortable, able to slip over her head, and actually she'll have to slip this, her whole body through this because there's no opening. I didn't create an opening down here with snaps. I could do that. I got to figure out how to do that, make my daughter's life easier. But for right now, we're going for cuteness. 
and I'm going to run the elastic through. When I get that started, we'll come back on and uh, kind of gauge how full we want it to encase her little neckline because there's a lot of fabric. So I'll get back with you when I get that quarter inch elastic ready. Okay, got the good old spool of quarter inch elastic left over from COVID mask days. And I've just put a safety pin at the end down here. So it'll be something I can use to push through. And threading elastic through a casing or anything really is just a push and pull kind of thing. I'm gonna start from, honestly it doesn't matter, but I am gonna start from this side that's the shorter side, just cause I can see it. Now I've left it on the spool uh, this keeps it from slipping away from me and I don't have to hold it with my extra finger. Oh yeah, I don't have one. You know what I mean. So, I'm just start it. It's a little tight right here because this is a big seam. It's a little thick on the fabric. But threading elastic is just a push and pull. Push and pull. Now this is a really big neckline. It's going to take a bit. But I shouldn't come up against any seam issues other than it being a little thicker because all of the seams are on the inside this is sewn directly on this casing is sewn directly on the outside of the garment so just push a little pull and see we've already through one side now going through to the next sleeve again it's just a push as much fabric onto that as you can and pull. Because we're doing it from the spool, we have the luxury of pulling as much as we want and then we can pull out the excess via the spool side so we don't waste any. And it'll give us the opportunity to kind of size it up without having to worry about whether or not we've already cut it, that kind of thing. Cause yeah, it's just a convenience. I'm just kind of try and pull it through. Make sure we get it nice and even. Or at least where it's not super tight. Because I want to be able to get this done without it pulling too much. Let's hold it here. Pull some of that elastic through. And just keep pulling. The bias tape, the other good thing about using it as a casing, it then there's a huge variety of colors. So you could have got, I, or I could have gotten something to coordinate with this fabric, um, even a little yellow or a green or, or even a kind of goldy color that's the outline of the flowers. Pink, there's a little pale pink in here. All kinds. But it's good because, first of all, it does come in different widths. So I could have gotten a wider one if I wanted to, if I needed a wider elastic. It's on the biased, so it's already easy to curve. You don't have to put a lot of effort into um, clipping or anything like that to make things curve. I don't think that would have been a problem on this particular little outfit, but all the more easy. We are headed for the the other side. Oh, so all we got left is our sleeve left over there. We're going through the front right now. And again, we're gonna give it a nice yank. It's not hard, but we're just trying to get that elastic to distribute. Because I don't want it to be all bunched up by the time I get to the end and then I really have to give it a pull. move it along. This is a seam, the other arm seam. Just a little extra fabric so it makes it tighter. Sorry, I'm trying to keep y'all in view. I'll push and push and pull it through. And we're almost through to the other side where we started. There we go, pull some of that off that spool. 
It's a large neck. It's got a lot of gather to it when you finish. Oops. Don't let go of your pen, your safety pen. Oh, it's a whole other issue. But at least you can chase it down because we've attached it pretty tightly to this um, elastic. Now that right there is a seam in the bias tape. That might be a little tricky to get through sometimes. Might be a little thinner than it should be. We just power through it. No problem, as long as you don't rip a seam. You are usually good to go. You don't want to rip a seam at this point. The other thing I was thinking about is this is kind of a one shot deal. If you mess this up, <laughs> you don't get another chance. There's not another vintage pillowcase. I think that's what makes me nervous about a lot of fabric that I use. It's, it's affordable, yes, but it's usually a one shot deal which I guess is the reason you want it to be affordable if you're concerned about messing it up. All right, now I'm gonna hold these together. I'm gonna try and kinda, see how curly this stuff gets? It is a gathered top for sure. It ends up looking really cute. Of course, you know, I guess if you really wanted to, if you wanted it to be concealed, you could put the casing on the inside. They put the casing on the outside as part of the decorative part of the, the little garment, but you could put it on the inside and completely conceal it all together. So if you didn't have a coordinating bias tape that you wanted to use, but you still wanted to use bias tape because it's easy, <laughs> you could put it on the inside and have it any color. As long as it didn't show through like a bright color on white, you know, that kind of thing. That's actually looking really good. All right. Let's just keep messing with it. Let's see if we can get it evened out. Okay. Now we need to pull from the front, obviously. Let go of that. It's looking kind of good. All right, I'm going to mess with this a little more, get a little more even. It's hard to see on the screen, especially since I use these light colors. But I think we're almost there. And once I cut it off, actually, let's see if we can. the beauty of this process you just pull a little more elastic another reason I like to do it off the spool can't always buy it on the spool I, I bought it on Amazon on the spool I'll include a, a, a link at the bottom but I'm gonna go ahead and at least cut this side off and try to get a better fit by putting them together so I'll open my pen up my safety pen and I will put on the other side of the elastic so it kind of makes a semi seam for now and then that gives me the opportunity to really work it pull it from all directions try to ruffle it up just right and again, I want it to be roughly, but I don't want it to our attacker. And I'm hoping, if I understand correctly, we're going to be seeing the grandkids tomorrow. So maybe I can get some short videos 
of them wearing their new little outfits and um, we'll put those up as well so Now, a lot of patterns, I'm sure this one does too, gives you like a, a gauge for your pattern, I mean your elastic length, and um, I could use that right now, <laughs> I probably could use that right now, but um, I, I think I kind of got the idea, I know about how big her little neck is, and I think that's going to be perfect it'll fit over her shoulders and it'll give her enough room in her little body too so I'm gonna sew this down and come over here to the machine and I am going to sew right over the top of this elastic where it's meeting the edge of this bias tape and it's also in a seam so I'm going to sew my needle and I'm going to come up over the edge here and that way I will catch I'm going to go back one time over all of it cut my and then the only thing I've got to worry about I'm going to take the safety pin off of that end of it I'm leaving this one on for right now because I don't ever want to lose this but those Where's my little scissors? Oh, there they are. I'm going to cut the elastic very close to that seam that I just made over the top of it. I'm going to fold my bias tape down. I'm going to take one more look at that little neckline. And I don't want it to slip off her shoulders, which I don't think it will but never hurts to make sure. So I'm gonna lay that elastic right on top of that bias tape and I'm gonna put this one over it. And I think what I'm gonna do, I think I make this up every time I do it. I'm going to sew over the top of it, which is uh, a single line of, of stitching and that's where the uh, other bias tape is, is meeting. Actually, I might trim that a little so it's a little frayed. So trim your bias tape here. I'm going to push this over the top here. And I'm going to sew a seam right where it's meeting the other side of the bias tape. And sure it's tight enough where you've got all your gathers and you can realign your gathers after you're after you're through so you just want to make sure you don't cut yourself short uh, I'm actually going to leave the other side of the bias tape open and I'm just going to sew over the top of this elastic right over the seam I just made on the other side Cut. And what I did is I pulled my elastic out and I s put a seam right over the top and that's that first piece of bias tape from the other side. I really wish I picked a different color. And so now I'm going to cut that really close. Okay. And then I'm going to fold this over and I'll cut it a little shorter, maybe about here, maybe just an inch long. And that will give me enough room to kind of fold it under and give it a little more finished look. Now I'm going to sew over the top and square around it so I catch all of it. And catch the elastic as well. Now make sure that your fabric is flat. 
Now where you don't want your fabric gathered, you just want your elastic gathered. So you may have to pull the elastic a little there to keep it from being gathered. It's a little tricky, but I got faith in y'all. Y'all can do this. If I can make it up and do it, you can do it. Alright, I'm going to push my needle over to my side. Make sure I've lined them up. And I'm covering that elastic. And there's probably a hundred different ways to do this. And this is just one I'm kind of making up as I go. And then I'm going to go like this, make a little box. With my needle again. And blend down the side. Gets a little thick at that seam. Go back a stitch. There we go. What I'm doing is making a little box around the bias tape just to make sure it doesn't fray. Everything is captured. And I don't have a big bulky seam there. Okay, that looks terrible from the other side. <laughs> but I will clean that up. That's just the just the little ends of where I stopped and started and got all the elastic put in. So I can get all the little pennants out of there. And now for this side, I remember I did this in the back of the little romper, so it's not going to be a big shower. So after we do that, readjust that elastic. And now all we're going to do is hem the pants. Okay. I went to the ironing board and I put in about a one inch hem. Again, something you can modify, you can use the patterns recommendations, you can put a wider one in, it just depends on, on the tapering of the leg. If the leg tapers a lot, you know, it bells out at the bottom, then you're going to have a lot of excess fabric, it's harder to make a wider hem. But I'm just doing a little one inch hem. I'm going to start my hem in the uh, inseam. I'm going to put my presser foot up against the raw edge of the, sorry I keep hitting the tripod there, of the hem where I had surged it. And I'm going to push my needle over as far to the left as I can. So I just catch uh, close to the top of that. And we're just going to give it a start. And we don't have to really worry about back stitching because we're going to meet this particular seam from the other side. it so it's pretty easy going. No mystery to this straight stitch all the way around. And there we go. We just meet the other side, maybe give it a back stitch then. And there's our hem. Nice little one inch hem. And I'm going to do the other side and we will be done. Okay everybody, looks like we're done. Now of course this is kind of plain so we could add some little brick rack to the legs, a little bow up here, any kind of embellishment when we wanted. Um, before I put it together I could have embroidered something but this is this fabric is just so vintage and so pretty that I just didn't think it needed anything extra. I was really happy with these big flowers coming up on the front Again, this is our pattern. 
So our pattern is 8347 Simplicity. It looks like this. I got this last year, so I'm pretty sure it's, it's still out. And I, I believe I saw it online, so I know it's still in print. Um, I'll include a link to it um, that you can purchase it online. Patterns aren't real cheap, so be sure to get you some tracing paper. I'll also include a link for that because you want to be able to trace the size you need right now and hopefully be able to use it for other patterns or other uh, sizes in the future. This has a cute little ruffle top. It was pretty easy to put together. It's only three pieces. We sewed the front to the back. We sewed the inseam and then we put it inside of itself right sides together and sew this this line that the seam that goes all the way from the front to the back the only thing we needed to do then was attach our little sleeves which are, are just these panels on the side we ran single fold bias tape along the edge of the armholes and up the side where the arm and the or the sleeve and the body meet that created our little finished edge which looks really nice we did not use the patterns casing piece we used bias tape which was half inch and we were using quarter inch elastic so it worked out perfect there was plenty of room we ran our elastic and then just shaped it up and made sure that it um, it would fit her, it will fit her neck, but it will also be big enough for her to get a whole little body in here because there's no opening at the bottom like a traditional snap bottom. Now, if you want to get creative, you could change up the way you put the pattern together and you could add snaps here. Uh, I don't know exactly what that would entail. Um, I'm not sure where you change your steps up, but I am sure I'll have to work that out eventually. And because someone's going to say, well, why doesn't it have snaps at the bottom? Gift horse and all that. So hopefully I'll get a chance tomorrow to actually have her model this. And I'll make a little short of her wearing this and maybe her other little dress that we made. And see if I can get a short made of that. And this is the first video, first two videos and I'll put a link to those in um, in this video so you can check this out. This is a little dress, a little pilgrim dress. Again, it's made out of a man shirt, uh, so uh, thrifted. And we will join up again when I'm doing my next project, which hopefully will be soon. Hope y'all enjoyed. Please subscribe, like, and by all means, comment with any questions, any suggestions. If there's if there's something you prefer to see that I'm not showing you, more sewing, more detail, less detail, let me know.